ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube universe what is going on with you on this Saturday it is Saturday May 20th 2023 roughly 3 o'clock p.m. California time I'm of course your always gracious host Fallon from GoNootropics.com coming at you with the cosmic astronaut energy chairs good to see all of you beautiful people up in the comments up in the video thank you for tuning in to once again another broadcast today we're talking about the kratom science baby right what is the kratom science the other day i had a little autistic flare-up you know you, you ever have one of these it's one of these flare-ups where you just want to pull everything apart examine all the intricate little details break something examine all the little pieces right how does it fit in how does elon musk rocket fly into space what is the science <laughs> right you want to know the science it's not enough just to you know take this plant this this beautiful plant like the thai people do and just chew on the leaves you you want to you want to find out you want to put it under the microscope examine all the little pieces what is happening what is going on what are these alkaloids baby what are the alkaloids so i had one of these flare-ups i'm looking up this guy dr chris mccurdy right if you heard of this guy this guy is like I want to say maybe the forerunner into the the kratom science world i'm like this is interesting you know there's not a lot of science about kratom you could go on google scholar and you know they do say don't you hear this that oh there's not a lot of science around kratom but i was on google scholar and and there were quite a few i mean kratom studies you could go on google.com slash scholar and you can find there's, I mean, there are studies being conducted surrounding Kratom. There are people looking into, uh, you know, mitrogenine. And, and there's people looking into this situation. And Dr. Chris McCurdy, this is this one of these PhD guys out of the University of Florida. He has a whole orchard of Kratom trees over in Florida that... Uh, <coughs> These trees were donated to him by, by just people who were growing their own kratom in Florida. Apparently, Florida is a pretty good place to grow kratom. You know, kratom is, a, of course, a tree. And these people in Florida had these trees. They donated it to him. He's got a whole orchard. I think he said he's got over 300 kratom trees growing at the University of Florida. And him and his team are, like, spearheading the kratom science right they're spearheading the science behind kratom what is happening he's got like a degree in opioid science studying uh you know pain in the context of pharmaceuticals and pharmacology and all this so of course kratom was one of these things he just had to get into his hands right tear it apart just like this is what science does they tear it apart they examine every little piece and they take one piece out of the thing, one of these alkaloids, and they figure out how can we capitalize on this, right? So let's just take one little thing. Let's just take one of these little alkaloids out of the plant. It's like transplanting a child from his home, right? You take a, a child out of his home and transplant him someone, somewhere else. And this is what science is. They transplant an alkaloid out of the family of alkaloids and they figure out, well, how can we use this, this just this one? It's like, we don't want to just use Kratom, you know? This is what pharmaceuticals are. It's just taking one thing and one thing from a plant and figuring out how can we just make this one thing work instead of just using the plants, you know? Then we could patent it, then we can do this, then we can make some money. So I'm watching this video, you know, Dr. Chris McCurdy, and the video is very interesting. And uh, he's conducted a lot of experiments with these rats, 
you know th this is what they do they don't use humans <laughs> they use these rats right and they hook the rats up and they're injecting their brain and they're measuring levels of you know all the various alkaloids like the mitrogenine the seven hydroxy metrogenine they're, they're measuring when these levels rise when these levels drop one of the experiments was the hot plates you ever heard of this this is the hot plate experiment where they test the pain threshold of a rat with these hot plates. And what they do is they heat up this hot plate, right? And they inject the rat with whatever they're using. In this case, that's the mitrogenine. And they test the pain threshold. And if the rat stays on the hot plate, right? This, this very hot, hot plate. If the rat stays there, well, you know the thing is working. You know, so you inject a rat with morphine and you see if the rat is lifting its little feet, you know, if it's lifting its little feet, uh, that means the thing is not working. But if the rat is just sitting on the hot plate, that means the analgesic effects of the morphine is working because the rat can't feel anything, right? The rat's on the hot plate. It, it can't feel anything because it's being injected with morphine. So they're doing this and... uh you know, the rat is on the hot plate. And what he noticed, which I, I thought was interesting, was as mitrogeny levels dropped in the rat, the rat still stayed on the hot plate. And Chris McCurdy, Dr. Chris McCurdy, came to the conclusion that the pain-killing analgesic effects of Kratom uh, might not be due to its opiate effects at all. It's being mediated by something completely different which would be a breakthrough in pain management right this is this is good science this is something you know we could all get behind here's something that you know if we could just extract this one thing out of this plant just extract this one thing out of kratom and use that in place of these more harmful opioids that we've been using for years. Well, this would be this would be a breakthrough, you know, scientific discovery, non-addictive, uh, analgesic, something something from a plant, you know, and then ship it off to the masses, baby. Ship it off to the masses. So he's conducted, and you should look up the video, watch the video, uh, see what the current kratom science is. You know, they've identified, I think, over 40 alkaloids in Kratom. We hear about mitrogenine. We hear about 7-hydroxymitrogenine, which another interesting thing was he doesn't detect any 7-hydroxymitrogenine in the plants when they harvest the plants. He doesn't, they don't see any 7-hydroxymitrogenine. They see it in the processed, once the plant, once the leaves have been processed from the kratom tree, then it's detected. It's like this, it's like this fermentation process. And of course, in the body, mitrogenine is converted to 7-hydroxymitrogenine in the body. As mitrogenine levels drop, 7-hydroxymitrogenine uh, levels go up. So there's this like kind of cross, there's this kind of cross thing going on. Whereas the levels drop, 7-hydroxy goes up. And this is, of course, they say like 40-fold. It's like 10 to 40-fold more potent than morphine, this 7-hydroxy mitrogenine, which sounds crazy. Uh, but the levels are present in such small amounts. Of course, when you take Kratom, you're, you're, not, really, you're not really getting something that's 40 times stronger than than morphine this is because the plant is smarter than us right the plant is smarter this is why we use the whole plant we use the whole plant and i'm looking at you know all these studies he's doing and i'm interested i'm intrigued but i'm like what a neurotic way to just kind of study this plant through science what a neurotic way here you are with these rats here you are subjecting these rats with with these needles you're injecting a needle into their brain you're subjecting them to all these experiments all these harebrained experiments it's like what kind of mind takes a plant and starts conducting all these experiments with rats it takes a certain type of mind 
you know this was of course we've been studying with rats for a long time right it wasn't his kind of plan to study with rats we've been doing this forever it's something we've always done right but there had to be that first guy who was like you know what let me inject this rat with this thing <laughs> let me inject a needle into his brain let me let me put him in the hot plate uh, let me perform all these experiments on these rats you know and and i'm looking at how we just study things as from the scientific lens and it's like this very neurotic it's like it's it's, it's like a neurosis how we how we do things in science, how we study things in science. It's very weird if you think about it, all these rats, all these rat experiments, all these, all this lab equipment. When you could just grow a kratom tree and just take the leaf. It's like, do we really need all, all these studies? Do we, do we really need all this scientific progress? It's like the plant grows, you eat the leaf, you make tea out of the leaves. Uh, you, Problem solved, right? This is how most indigenous cultures use the plants. It's like you don't see them taking rats and injecting them with, you know, these kind of isolated alkaloids and these isolated chemicals, making these rats go through all these, you know, weird experiments. The, the tree had, grows wild. They found that it has medicinal properties. It's like, oh, eat this. It, it helps with fever, it helps with pain, it helps with diarrhea, this, this and that, this and that, and so on and so forth. But here in the West, we just can't, it's like we can't help ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't help but just neurotically just break everything down into its like little pieces, into its little parts, in, into every little thing. And you know, we, we got thousands of rats probably the demand is so high for rats like there's rat farmers you know because science needs so many of these damn rats there's probably some guy making a lot of money breeding rats for this very specific purpose <laughs> right so kratom science instead of just taking the leaf eating the leaf soaking the leaf in some water something that is so basic something that is just extremely common sense what do we do we, we got to put everything under a microscope and, and see what it does what's it do what what happens when we inject this rat you know and to a certain degree science has progressed us in, in some ways but also if you really pull back and take a look has science improved our health that much if you look at pharmaceuticals, uh, are we doing anything other than masking these health symptoms? Like you got high cholesterol. What? Well, here's this pharmaceutical we developed. Yeah, it's got side effects. You know, yeah, this and that. Uh, you got high blood pressure. Yeah, here's this pill. Uh, but it also has side effects. It also, you know, it's like we don't know everything about it, but it's it's safe. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to fix your problem. You're still fat, right? It's still fat, but here you're still fat, but here's a pill. Here's a pill, baby. So this is science. We we broke it down into all its little parts and we put it under a microscope. Uh, we ran some experiments and, and here it is. Your insurance is going to cover the cost, baby. Your insurance, don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. So Kratom Science, you know, good or bad. You guys let me know down in the comments, Fallon, go nootropics.com. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you very soon. Peace.